was 1 and 5 to generate 400 peak watts at 40% capacity. Improvements over old technology... <laughs> Speakers today are um, myself, Bill Todorov, Pandya Belchandra, <laughs> Neil Sudhakar, who is right now, <laughs> Mr. Dal Min Kwan, <laughs> and that's our agenda. It should be one hour or less. so you know what the agenda is. But I'll start by reading that. <clears throat> what we're going to do here today is review a new technology for generating sunlight and the politics and philosophy of integrating this non-polluting form of electrical generation into a global culture which has been conditioned that there has to be some form of combustion or some active movement to create power or to find work. And SETI is supporting the new national government of Vietnam, which is the new democratic regime of Vietnam, led by selected Prime Minister Dao Minh Quan, and their efforts to promote solar power generation. Historically, electricity has always been generated by burning wood, or peat moss, or grasses, or crop residues, or coal, or oil, or methane, or natural gas. A fuel was burned to generate electricity. The fuel boiled water, <coughs> which turned to steam turbine, which generated the electricity. Or it was combusted in a series of small chambers, commonly known as an internal combustion engine which drove connecting rods that turned crankshafts, and that, in turn, spun electrical generators which produced electricity. The other common way of generating electricity were dams were built to control raging rivers, and the diverted overflow was put to work spinning electrical turbines which produced electricity. Twenty years ago, in the United States, we invested very heavily in a new fuel called nuclear power. Three Mile Island and Chernobyl have seriously questioned both the safety and the reliability of these alternatives. Now all of us are very well integrated with electricity. Electricity is in our lives, it's in our growth, it's in our work, 
It's in our homes, our lifestyles, our national security, and our resultant prosperity is heavily dependent on a bountiful supply of inexpensive electricity. And we have here in the United States prospered in, and how much less expensive was it per million instructions per second? The result you see is a huge amount of work, 50 times more than the 1984 computer. Rules their economic engines. Most of you don't know much about solar power because it hasn't had much publicity in a positive manner. So I'll tell you a few well-known but obscurely published facts. Sunlight impinging or falling on the earth in the Los Angeles area has the equivalent energy of 850 watts per meter square. Now that translates into approximately one horsepower per square yard. Now that doesn't mean a lot to you, um, but if you did it per square mile, you would have almost three million horsepower per square mile. And what does that translate into? That translates to all the cars on the 405 freeway at 3 p.m. rush hour, traveling 45 miles an hour from the 55 freeway to LAX. That much energy is available in sunshine. I know that's probably hard to fathom, but and I'm, and I'm not here promoting a solar car. We aren't there yet. But we have perfected silicon solar cells, which provide electricity more reliably and cleaner than any other form of electric power generation ever known to man in all of our history. That's quite a statement, cleaner and more reliable than any other form of electric power generation. But it's very well documented. It's just not very well published. All of our satellites are powered by solar energy. A few more facts. There's more energy in the form of sunlight on the oil fields of Riyadh in Saudi Arabia every day than there is 100 years of oil under the ground. More energy in the form of sunlight every day on the oil fields of Riyadh than 100 years of oil under the ground. Now here's the last one. The total fossil fuel supply of the Earth, planet Earth, all the known fossil fuel reserves, all the forests, all the peat bogs, all the coal reserves, all the oil reserves, all the natural gas, all the grasslands, all the brushlands, if you collected all of those to burn, to produce energy, it would be equivalent to 19 days of sunshine. We've been supported for all of our time by the energy of the sun. If the sun ceased to exist, we would have 19 days of existence. So it doesn't make a lot of sense not to use the sun as our source of energy. Oil has been the embryonic fluid that has nourished this developing technological society. But we are out of the technological womb. And it is time to use our accumulated technological wisdom to harvest the energy of that wonderful nuclear furnace, which is 93 million miles away and poses no nuclear threat and has been there for a billion years and has supported our prosperity for the last 50,000 and will be there for another billion years. We have the capability of using that energy. It's not a myth, it's, it's a reality. And this presentation is about showing you in real terms what that capability is. The economics of solar power have always been a distant promise. We have been able to demonstrate that it is economical, that it is competitive with fossil fuels, 
and as its growth continues, it will be less expensive than fossil fuels with zero pollution, built 10 years ago in 1983. What we're showing today is the fifth generation prototype. And it is ready for global mass production and distribution and proliferation. This research and development to get to this product you're going to see today has been going on for 12 years. And it's been supported by more than 140 loyal investors and shareholders who saw this vision long before it was generally apparent. SETI and its predecessor has expended to date over $4 million to develop the technology you're going to see today. Okay, this is a prototype um, that was built by Bill Federson, who's in the rear there, in uh, Oxnard, California, at the Oxnard Airport. We first located it in Banning, California, but the logistics of it and the difficulty of getting to it had us move it to Oxnard. And the wonderful thing about being in Oxnard was Oxnard was a difficult test site. It's overcast in the morning. There's a late fog to burn off. Uh, so it showed that it could work in an extreme circumstance. Our Fresnel lenses and secondary lenses. And if Harlan, if you can change the slide. No. It's it's behind the secondary lens of the viewer. No, that's the secondary lens. Now the secondary lens focuses on the solar cell and Harlan you can show them the solar cell. You want the close up? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's the solar cell. Now its actual size is the size of your small fingernail. It's one centimeter in diameter. And it's a, it's a silicon chip. There it is alongside of a dime. Now that little solar cell does all the work. The uh, primary lens and the secondary lens focus the light into that small solar cell. The purpose of the whole mechanism, if you'll come back to the overview, no, the, the whole array, Harlan. All this does is steer the lenses into the sun every day. This is driven by a computer that made here, which can be used to desalinate water and clean up brackish water supplies or provide water from seawater where there was no other way of doing it economically. SETI has contracts in India, one which has been signed and the letter of intent is arriving for 125 million dollars. We have three other contracts in India which are pending negotiation and our visit there which are over 700 million dollars collectively. Sri Lanka indicated an, an interest last week for 250 million dollars. Malaysia has interest indicated an interest for a million and a half, for one and a half billion dollars, I'm sorry, not a million and a half. Laos and Cambodia are potential markets, and so is Vietnam. China has indicated an interest, and uh, I have a meeting with Boris Yeltsin in Moscow next month at this time, after my trip to India. So this is the potential market, we're at the very tip of the iceberg. The global demand for energy is so huge, and you, having come from foreign countries, know that very well. And this is our product, and we'd like to see you involved in this. 
and help him get it done. Thank you. Uh, Vandia Belchandru will now talk about the technology of manufacturing. your cost of electricity will probably drop down to seven cents per kilowatt hour. The orders we have in India are willing to pay us eight and a half cents a kilowatt hour, so we have a margin in there. It's a 20% margin, which is very popular. Good afternoon again. And, uh, to introduce Mr. Jake and late arrival uh, Dr. Rajan Anand from Federation of Indian Association, President X, and Mr. Sudip Goroshekar from Chamber of Commerce, Indian Chamber of Commerce from Los Angeles. And there's Mr. Roy here from the American Hydrogen Association. He's also quite neatly uh, uh, in, in 